Okay, we're in the Python language here, and we're going to talk about loops. So I'm trying to get a program to run something for a certain amount of time. So there's a couple of different types of loops. We're actually going to look. Oh, you know what's actually neat about Replit here? I'm pretty sure I can just go in and, hey, here we go. This will actually input a loop for us. So we can use the default loop actually to do some exploration to start. So um, this loop is a for loop. And what that's saying is the program is going to carry out a set of instructions, um, especially because it has a range here, for a, a certain number of steps or within a range of something. So for i in range 5, so um, default for range is to start at 0 and count by one up to whatever number you've put in the range and it's going to say print a number i so this range is actually going to change so when we go to run the program it'll probably make a little more sense like we said it started at zero okay so um it started at zero then one two three you'll notice at four it completed and that's because our counting started at zero so if you count here there are actually one two three four five um iterations of this program. So this loop actually ran five different times and it printed out the string a number and then what was the number? What was ever i was in our for loop. So because we were able to put the uh, variable i in here, it started at zero. So the very first time it ran it, it said print in number zero. Then it jumps back up. It increments the value by one. So i now becomes the number one. So print a number, and what is i? Well, i is now the number one. Jumps back up, and it checks the loop. i is now two. Okay, that's still in the range of five. Print a number, prints the number two, then the number three, then the number four. And at that point, it's now printed, or it's gone through the range of five different times, or it's gone through the loop five different times. So now, it ends the loop. So it ran for a certain number of steps in this case. Um, I'm going to stop the indent. We could also do, let's say, for x in, and we can build our own little loop that is a little bit different in this case. Um, we'll build one that actually goes through uh, a string. x in, uh, let's say string. S-T-R-I-N-G. Okay, for x in string, we put our colon here. I'm going to say print. Um, print, whoopsie, print x, okay? So I haven't got rid of the first loop, so the first loop is gonna run again, but you'll notice here, once it's finished the first loop, so it never, it didn't jump between loops, the program completed everything in the first loop, it printed a number all in the range of five, so it printed them all out, and then the next one, it said for x in string, so what this for loop is doing is it's assigning each character, so it's assigning x to the very first character. So it's counting through the number of letters in the um, word string in this case. So at the very beginning, x is the first letter s. So it prints the letter s. Then it jumps back up, okay? x is now the next letter, t, and you'll notice it prints the letter t, and it continues all the way till it gets to the g in the word string. And then once it is, there are no more letters in this string, uh, it stops running that loop, okay? So we've now completed this using an actual string along with a range for a for loop. There's also another type of loop called, and I got a, no longer event, a while loop, okay? A while loop is a little different from a for loop in the case that it will continue to run this until um, something is not true anymore, okay? So let's say while n is less than six, okay? I want this program to print out, print, hello, and actually I gotta make that a string by putting quotes around it, print hello, okay? Now, I, n is a variable at this point and I haven't given it a value. So we're gonna say n is equal to five. Now, if I run this program, we're gonna run into a very interesting issue, okay? So I'm gonna hit run, and hopefully it doesn't crash the entire page. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to give it a, set, uh, a colon here. Let's go to run this program. Oh my gosh, and you can't see it, but it is just running and running, and you'll notice the program hasn't stopped. I'm actually gonna stop it here. Does it allow me, yeah, here we go. I can scroll up the console. So let us go to the top here. Oh, it doesn't even give us that option. 
The program tactically ran the first two strings and then it ran this one forever because the number n never changed, okay? So what we're gonna do in this while loop, if we do want it to end at some point, I'm gonna say I want i to um, increase by the number one. So this is a, a quick way of doing that using the plus and then equal symbol. Another way we could do it, I'm gonna comment it out, but another way we could tactically do this, and it means the exact same thing, I could say i is equal to i plus the number one. In other words, every time this loop runs, it's going to increment the value of y, i, sorry. And I shouldn't be using i, what am I talking about? I need n, n is what's important for this loop, okay? So we have n, and it's starting at five, so remember that, so when we go to run this, it actually only runs hello once, okay? If n happened to be zero to start and we ran it, it'd give us a hello one, two, three, four, five, six times because starting at zero, we have the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, and five, which is actually six values of it, hence why we got six hello. Six times it was lower than the number six, okay? So there are three different types of loops you can run in the Python language. Um, a range, so a for loop with a range, a for loop with a string, and a while loop.